Hi. I want to start a two-part discussion of talking about how the equations that we call Maxwell's equations end up showing us that electricity and magnetism are what generate what we call electromagnetic waves, that they are a proper solution to Maxwell's equations. And it's the work that Maxwell did that really sort of allowed him to get credit for a combination of equations that he was only a small part of in conjunction with Gauss, with Lorentz, with Ampere, and with Faraday. So to consider an electromagnetic wave, what we would do is look at a perspective electromagnetic plane wave. And plane just means that the electric field and magnetic field each happen to be acting along an axis, specifically making up the YZ plane, so that those changes are just happening that way as the energy is moving along the X direction. So this cartoon shows what that wave equation would look like with the electric field oscillating in the Y direction up and down and the magnetic field oscillating in the Z direction back and forth. So to consider what's happening, we're going to take a look first at Faraday's law and then at the Ampere-Maxwell equation. So with Faraday's law, if we were to have some closed loop traveling through space and we calculate the electrical circulation around a closed loop, then the circulation of the electric field around that closed loop is going to be equal to minus the change in magnetic flux with respect to time. So for our loop, we have the electric field that's just oscillating up and down in the y-axis so let's look at this little arbitrary point X that I've chosen on my wave. Well, if I were to look at it at point X, I have an electric field going up with the strength of E at point X. And if I go a little distance delta X down the line, I would have an electric field that would be the electric field of X plus delta X. So the loop I'm going to choose, I'm going to travel along the X direction a distance delta x, I'm going to go up a distance l with the direction of the electric field, then I'm going to loop back a distance of delta x, and then I'm going to go down a distance l, which would be opposite the direction of the electric field. So for my circulation, as I'm traveling along the x-axis, my electric field and change in position are at a 90 degree angle to each other, so the dot product is going to give me zero there. Along these pieces, as I follow my electric field, I would have my distance L that I traveled times the electric field at position X plus delta X. And then I would have, since I'm going opposite the direction of the electric field, minus my distance L times my electric field at X. That's the circulation. Well, this makes a loop. And there's a surface there, and that surface is rectangular. So if I were to look at the change in magnetic flux, there's a magnetic field that's oscillating back and forth through this box. So that magnetic field is always going to be passing directly through that area. So for calculating my magnetic flux, it would just be my area times my magnetic field. And what I would find for that, the change in magnetic flux is going to be, well, I have a constant area of delta x times L. So I would have to take the derivative of my magnetic field with respect to time. And yes, I know here I wrote this as an absolute differential. We're needing to look at the magnetic field as a partial derivative with respect to time. We're considering our change in our x-dependence as being independent from our change in time to make this work. Well, if I equate those two pieces, which is what Faraday's law says we should do, all my terms have an L, that arbitrary distance L cancels itself out. And I could divide both sides by x. And that would give me a function of x plus delta x minus my function at x 
divided by delta x. Well, if I were to take the limit as delta x goes to zero, that's the exact definition of the derivative of electric field with respect to position, a partial derivative. So the derivative of electric field with respect to position should be equal to, all I have left over here is minus the partial derivative of magnetic field with respect to time. So that's the first piece that we're going to file away for coming up with a wave equation where something is changing with regards to position and time simultaneously. The second breadcrumb that we need to take a look at is the Ampere-Maxwell equation. So my magnetic field is also going to be oscillating and there's a changing electric field passing through any loop that I could create following along a circulating path of magnetic field. So if I were to again take the same path consideration that I was doing and to travel in the positive direction I would have to go this way around my magnetic field loop. So starting at x I travel along my magnetic field at x a distance l. I travel my same distance delta x down the line I travel opposite my magnetic field at location x plus delta x, a distance l, and then I head back that distance delta x. And again, two of those terms, my vectors are at a 90 degree angle to each other. So the dot product there is going to be zero. So what I would get would be my magnetic field at x times this arbitrary length minus my magnetic field at x plus delta x times my arbitrary length. And from the Maxwell contribution to Ampere's law, that would have to be equal to mu naught times epsilon naught times the change in electrical flux through that box. Well, just like I said with the magnetic flux, the electrical flux is always passing perpendicular through that box. That box has a fixed area of L times delta X. So my change in flux would just be equal to my area L times delta X times the derivative of electric field with respect to time. Well, again, that factor of L cancels out of all of the terms. And what I end up left with, well here, minus a function of X plus delta X subtracted from the function of X, let's pull out that minus sign, bring it over to the other side. That's going to give me my function at x plus delta x minus my function at x. So if I divide both sides by delta x, once again I get the partial derivative with respect to x. And the partial derivative of my magnetic field with respect to x is going to be minus mu naught times epsilon naught times the partial derivative of the electric field with respect to time. So that brings me to the first two pieces that we need to file away and in part two we'll put them together and take a look at how the derivative of electric field with respect to x equals minus the partial derivative of the magnetic field with respect to time and the partial derivative of the magnetic field with respect to x equals minus two constants mu naught times epsilon naught times the partial derivative of the electric field with respect to time give us an equation for an electromagnetic wave. Stay tuned for part two.